Have you ever wondered why certain Pokemon are considered legendary while others are considered mythical? Me too. And recently I was looking at it and honestly it doesn't make a lot of sense and I feel like there has to be a better way. And I think I figured it out. Now, obviously, I don't work at Nintendo, I don't work for the Pokemon Company, and I definitely don't work for Game Freak. So take all this with a grain of salt. This is just something I'm doing for fun, and I hope that we can have a fun conversation down in the comments. As I looked through each generation of legendary and mythical Pokemon, I started noticing similarities, and I came up with five classifications to organize them by. Those classifications are Deity, Legend, Spirit, Experiment, and Alien. Deities are typically your box legendaries. Um, they're usually revered as gods in the games, if not the entire Pokemon world in later games. Legends are going to typically be the wandering or elemental legendaries. These Pokemon aren't typically revered as gods, but more like lesser gods or demigods. Spirits are going to be your guardian legendaries, and they usually have a fairy-like or playful demeanor. Experiments are exactly what they sound like. They are Pokemon that were created due to human experiment. And then aliens are legendary Pokemon that are of extraterrestrial origin. So they come from another planet, another dimension, or another world. All right, let's start from the top down. So in generation one, I didn't really find any Pokemon that I felt could be classified as a deity. Now, some of you may argue that Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres are revered as deities in Kanto, but ultimately they share more in common with the roaming legendaries of later games than they do with the deities of later games. I decided to classify Mew as a spirit due to its consistent portrayal as blinking in and out of sight, and due to its playful demeanor. Mewtwo, if you couldn't figure it out by the description of what I gave you for experiment, is going to be classified as an experiment. It's quite literally scientists trying to recreate Mew in a lab on Cinnabar Island. Next up, we have my personal favorite generation, Generation 2. These are going to be the first games where we have box legendaries, and I feel like Ho-Oh and Lugia are definitely revered as gods in these games. Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, however, seem to be more like demigods, especially since they're created whenever Ho-Oh resurrects them from the remains of the Pokemon who died in the Burned Tower. Celebi is the guardian spirit of Ilex Forest, and it's also the reason why I came up with the spirit category. Celebi has a lot of similar characteristics to Mew, and it is one of the first Pokemon to be referred to as a spirit in the games. Those similarities to Mew are why I classify Mew as a spirit rather than a deity or a legend. Next up, we have Gen 3. And I'm going to be honest, um, Gen 3 is where I kind of started tapering off from the rest of the Pokemon fandom. Didn't really pick back up on considering myself a fan until Gen 5, in spite of the fact that I did play both Gen 3 and Gen 4. But I just didn't really go out of my way to get any of the special Pokemon or, uh, or even complete my Pokedex in either one of them. However, I did play Alpha Sapphire and I really enjoyed it and I've since done my research so I think that I know how to classify these Pokemon fairly accurately. Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza are the box legendaries of these games, and they're definitely revered as gods in them. Groudon is the god of the land, Kyogre is the god of the ocean, and Rayquaza is the god of the air and atmosphere, and he helps bring balance to the other two. If those aren't gods, I really don't know what is. I decided to classify Latios and Latias as legendaries because of their roaming tendency similar to the roaming beasts in Gen 2. The elemental titans, Regice, Regiseal, and Regirock are classified as legendaries due to essentially being elemental demigods. Since Jirachi shares a lot of similarities with both Mew and Celebi, 
I of course decided to classify it as a spirit. Deoxys is the first Pokemon that I've encountered in this where I feel like I could put it in two different categories. Technically, I could put it in the alien category because it is an alien virus. Uh, however, due to the fact that it didn't become Deoxys until it was hit by a human laser beam, it's technically an experiment. I mean, I guess I would classify it as both. And as you can see, this means that even my classification system has its kinks, but I still think it's better than the original classification system come up with by the Pokemon company. Now we're moving on to Gen 4, which introduces the Pokemon that is quite literally the god of Pokemon. Arceus, by definition, is a deity because it is said to have shaped the world with its 1,000 arms after hatching from an egg before the universe was even a thing. While it did create Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, the trio is still powerful enough, in my opinion, to be considered deities, and they are worshipped as deities in their own right. Giratina also has the secondary classification of alien due to it coming from the distortion world. While Arceus is technically from outside of the planet, I feel like the fact that it made the planet means that it's not really alien to it. While Heatran isn't a uh, part of the main story, it is said to have been created at the same time as the box legendaries, and it's supposed to represent the planet's core. So I kind of feel like, despite the fact that it really seems more like a legendary in its appearance, I think that I want to classify it as a deity. Regigigas is probably the most surprising of the deities out of this generation. While it would seem that it could fall along the lines of being a demigod and thus would be classified as a legend, I feel the fact that it created the other Regis as a reason to classify it as a deity. Here's one from the original classifications that honestly kind of irritated me and what kind of spurred this into action. Cresselia, who from an appearance standpoint to me would seem more like a mythical Pokemon, and Darkrai, who from appearance to standpoint looks more like a legendary Pokemon, they're actually swapped. Cresselia is a legendary and Darkrai is a mythical. However, I've always viewed them as two sides of the same coin. Darkrai is known for causing nightmares and Cresselia is known as curing them. I feel like they're lesser gods of the night, so I would consider them legends. Azelf, Mesprit, and Yuxi are spirits based on the fact that they aesthetically look like Mew. As a matter of fact, they borrow pretty heavily from Mew's appearance. And then next up is because of their guardian status, which makes them similar to Celipi. Similarly, Manaphy is in the spirit category based on the fact that it is a sea guardian and shares similar aesthetic characteristics to other spirits in the category. I chose not to include Fion because Fion is considerably weaker than a typical legendary or mythical Pokemon, and it doesn't even have the ability to evolve into Manaphy, so I just left it out. I also consider Shaman a spirit because of its guardian-like abilities to purify the land and air around it, as well as to rejuvenate the area and its appearance. Unova is my second favorite region, and it is also my third favorite generation. It's the generation that renewed my love for the franchise, and I think that that means that I know more than enough to make sure that these are classified correctly. <laughs> Kyurem, Reshiram, and Zekrom are the box legendaries for this game, and they are supposed to be the three parts of the founding dragon of Unova. They're supposed to be based on the Taoist concepts of Yin, Yang, and Wu Ji, which means the two polarities and the absence of either one. Their power and representation of base philosophical concepts leads me to easily classify them as deities. Another thing that I love about Unova is that it has two roaming trios. Cabalion, Tarakian, and Verizian make up the Swords of Justice, which are based on the Three Musketeers, and they are joined by their dartanian sibling, Keldeo. While Keldeo is introduced as a younger, less powerful part of the team, 
It eventually finds its own, and it learns Secret Sword, which unlocks its Resolute form, which is why I have no problem classifying it and its three siblings as Legends. The same thing goes for the forces of nature, Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus. Each of these are demigods that represent wind, thunder and lightning, and fertile land. Victini is supposed to be the embodiment of victory. It lives in Liberty Garden as seemingly the guardian of the lighthouse there that's supposed to be a beacon of hope for the world where Pokemon and humans can live free. Now, I'm not really the uber patriotic type, but it is pretty cool that Unova is supposed to be an idealized version of the United States. But that's not what you're here for, so let's get back on topic. If it wasn't obvious based on earlier classifications, Victini is most definitely a spirit, as is Meloetta based on its appearance. And then finally we have Genesect, which is a fossil that was revived by Team Plasma and then given cybernetic upgrades, which makes it an experiment. So, Kalos didn't add a whole lot of Pokemon in general, and the same goes for its legendaries. Xerneas, Eveltal, and Zygarde are supposed to represent life, destruction, and ecological balance, respectively. While I initially thought that Zygarde would probably be an experiment, I realized that it could technically get all of its cells and become its complete form without the help of humans, so I went ahead and kept it as a deity and not have it have a dual classification. Volcanion was originally only available through events with X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, so there's really not a lot of information about it outside of its Pokedex entry. However, based on that, it does remind me of the roaming legendaries of previous games, so I decided to classify it as a legend. Similarly, Deancey and Hoopa don't really have much information to go on outside of their Pokedex description. Based on its appearance and demeanor, I decided that Deancey is a spirit, and then Hoopa, which has two forms, is going to be classified as a spirit for its Hoopa confined form, and then as a legend for its Hoopa Unbound form. All right, we made it all the way to the islands of Alola. Due to the addition of Ultra Beasts, Alola has more original legendary type Pokemon than any other region in the series. I decided to include them all because they're just too powerful to be excluded. They are basically legendaries, even though they are technically classified as legendaries. However, I do think that their classification is entirely just alien because they all come exclusively from Ultra Space. With that said, despite their origins in Ultra Space, Lunala, Solgaleo, and Necrozma will all be classified as deities. And that's based on the fact that in the games, Lunala and Solgaleo are worshipped as deities by the former kings of Alola, and this is because they shared their light with Alola. Similarly, Necrozma shared its light with Alola and Ultra Space, so that's why Necrozma is also a deity. Here are some more event-only Pokemon. We have Zeraora and Melmetal and Meltan. Zeraora and Melmetal, to me, based on their appearance, are both legends, and Meltan looks and acts more like a spirit. The Island Guardians, or the Tapus, are all going to be classified as spirits because I want to keep all the Guardian spirits in one, and they do have appearances that are very fairy-like, and they do seem very playful. Cosmog and Cosmoem are spirits, primarily due to appearance, and Cosmog's demeanor. Cosmoem doesn't really have a demeanor, but it doesn't really look that much different from Cosmog, so having them both spirits just makes sense. Marshadow, while it's more mischievous than playful, still falls into the spirit category based on its appearance and abilities. Type Null and Sylvalli are experiments because Type Null is literally an experiment that was meant to try and recreate Arceus, and then Sylvalli is just the evolved form of Type Null. Finally, while Magirna's appearance seems like it's a spirit, 
it makes more sense to call it an experiment because it is an artificially made Pokemon. All right, finally, we're on Gen 8. We are in the land of Galar, and this one was a little hard for me to do. So Zacian and Zamazenta were basically forgotten. At the beginning of the game, they're considered a single human hero. However, this hero had such a profound effect on Galar's founding that you could say that this hero is worshipped as a deity. And ultimately, I feel like since they fill the role of being a botched legendary, and they are this like huge hero in the founding of Galar, I feel like that still puts them in the deity category. Eternatus, despite technically being part of the trio of legendaries in this game, is going to be classified as an alien for me. I almost classified it as an experiment due to it being held by Chairman Rose, but he didn't really experiment on Eternatus that much. Really, he just fed it Dynamax energy. So ultimately, I feel like since it just came on a meteorite and smashed into Galar, alien is the most apt classification for it. Calyrex was less difficult for me to classify. While it had been forgotten, except for in the Crown Tundra, it was definitely the ruler of Galar at one point in its history, and is worshipped as a god in the Crown Tundra. So for me, that definitely makes it a deity. Just as with their Kantoan counterparts, the Galarian versions of the legendary birds are going to be legends and not deities. Even more so in Galar, because in Galar they are also roaming legendaries. Whereas in Kanto and Johto, they're more stationary. You search for them in a cave or in a building of some sort. In Galar, they are roaming legendaries. You have to go to the Isle of Armor, the Crown Tundra, or the wild area to find one of the three of them. And to me, that just even more solidifies the fact that these are legends and not uh, deities. Similarly, Glastrier and Spectrier are also technically roaming legendaries. That's what they do is they roam around the Crown Tundra. In parts of the story, they seem like they run off because they're scared to be our own people. I also feel like the fact that they're Calyrex's noble steed, depending on which carrot, that you decide to plant, that just, yeah, they're legends. I split Kupfu and Urshifu up, despite them both being considered legendaries in the official classification. To me, Kupfu just seems more like a spirit because of its, you know, like, fairy-like appearance. And I say fairy-like because it looks very much like a teddy bear, which seems like something that would, you know, be like a fairy-type creature if it were to come to life. And also, it's more in line in stats with the other Pokemon that are considered spirits. Whereas Urshifu gets an upgrade because its stats jump up pretty high, and they have a high status all over the Isle of Armor. They're considered to be very special and very powerful. I classified Urshifu as legend. This should come as no surprise to anyone. Regieleki and Regidrago are legends because they are just a continuation of the elemental demigods that are the titans created by Regigigas. We're finishing this off with another event-only Pokemon. Zerud is a little bit harder to classify. It shares characteristics with Guardian Spirits in the game, even so much as in the movie Spirits of the Jungle, it actually wears a cape that has Celebi's national Pokedex number on it. However, its appearance, its stats, and its size are more similar to that of other legendaries that I've classified. And ultimately, I think that's what I'm going to do is move forward with that classification and say that our final Pokemon in this is a legend. And that's it. I've <laughs> somehow successfully categorized all of these Pokemon into my five new categories for classifying legendaries. And that's it, folks. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And uh, I look forward to seeing y'all next time.